Hi guys, my name's Aubrey and we're here at the Aloe Yoga Store in Beverly Hills. We're gonna work on dropping back into wheel and standing back up. Let's get started. So in a drop back, it technically what's happening is our thighs and our pelvis is pressing forward and we're dropping back. But energetically, it's really important to remember that while the thighs, excuse me, rather the pelvis is pressing forward, we're actively engaging the thighs to drive energy backward. And while we are, yes, dropping back, we're actually going up, up, and up as much as we can before we start our drop back. So I have a fun little exercise we're going to do so that we can get used to engaging our thighs and engaging our core to create that lift and that movement. So get your chaturanga arms, approach the wall about this far apart. All right, so your feet don't move. From here, you're gonna place your hips into the wall. Your hands come to, small, come to the small of your back. From there, peel your chest away from the wall, keeping your chin tucked. Now, engage your thighs as well as your core to feel that draw up and away from the wall. Your hips are give or take over your toes, and you'll start to feel that tremble right away. So relax. We're gonna repeat this a few times. So again, chaturanga arms, that's our distance from the wall. Bring your hips into the wall, hands to the small of the back. Tuck your chin and peel your chest away. Last to leave the wall is the hips. And that happens by grounding down through the big toes, lifting in our quadriceps and engaging our core. Again, driving energy backward through our thighs and forward through our pelvis. One more time. Once you get this, experiment with this space right here. How long can you hold? How stable are you? Do you feel any pain? If the answers to those questions are all good to go, then let's try our drop back. The same idea for the drop back applies as it did in the practice. Our feet are about hip width distance apart. You're gonna ground down through your big toes. Again, you shift that pelvis forward so that they're almost in front of the toes. Your legs are straight energetically driving the thighs backward. Your hands come to your heart center, tuck your chin, and begin to lift up and back. See if this is comfortable now that we don't have the security of the wall. And if you're comfortable, then let's just go for it. The idea is, as long as you can look forward, keep that gaze. As soon as it becomes impossible to keep that drishti, start to trace the ceiling with your eyes, and you'll honestly feel it in your body when it's time to include the arms as well as shift the gaze. Notice that when I dropped into my wheel, I meet with the fingertips first, and I come onto the palms as gracefully as I can. And that's going to create a safe environment for my spine, as well as requiring my muscles to learn what it means to support my body in this shape. It's also going to be really beneficial when we start to come back up. So that same motion I was talking about with the rocking, you'll notice it naturally creates the same or rather opposite motion where my palms of my hands leave the mat first. So pay attention to that idea. Begin to rock front and back. Notice that you come onto the fingertips and at this point, the weight transfers into your legs. And just as we did in the beginning and in the exercise, we really put a lot of emphasis onto the legs to protect our spine and to accomplish our drop back and standing back up. So that's my take on Tadasana to Urdhva Dhanurasana and back up, or dropping back into your will and standing back up. Again, trust the process, trust yourself. You might fall, or it might take you a while to get it, but honestly, the joy is in the path, right? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this content, I highly encourage you to subscribe to Aloe's page. There's a ton of content already there and so much good stuff coming your way. Thank you. Bye.